Hi, welcome to uh, Aposteriori's IoT Lectures Online. Uh, we'll be talking about the new IoT as an IoTY platform created by our co-founder, Court Wee, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about how to use that uh, new software platform with an ESP32, one of the cheapest uh, and most powerful IoT microcontroller for prototyping that's available from Espressif. Okay, uh, this is lesson one. We're going to be very simple, simply doing just some uh, bit of groundwork, talking about IoT, doing a little bit of um, electronics connections, getting the, the hardware set up, and then a uh, very little bit at the end with a little bit of the software, just getting a little LED to blink on and off, okay? Um, IoT is, uh, an IoTY is an open source network electronics platform uh, it's based off of, um, there, there's been software like this in the past. Arduino has some support for this. Um, Blink with a Y used to have a wide support for this. Uh, it's now a bit less open source and a little more um, price gated. So we've decided to come up with our own open source version uh, for people who are still, you know, just for education purpose, just want to get into the IoT electronics prototyping world. Um, IoT Y software it has coding uh, that's block based, so it's good for um, introduction to uh, electronics. Uh, so you don't need to be a software developer to do this. Uh, you just need to have some logic, computational thinking, uh, fundamentals and things like that, uh, or learn it with the course itself. Uh, the, the software behind it uh, uses Google's Blockly. Uh, and there's also support for uh, Python as well. The software and the platform are meant to work with the ESP32, which comes from Espressif, which I think is based in Shenzhen. Uh, it's a feature-rich MCU. Uh, it's already got the Wi-Fi uh, uh, stack associated with it, the, the, the antenna, uh, everything you need. It includes Bluetooth as well, whereas the old ESP8326 didn't. So this is one good thing about ESP32. We can do a lot of stuff with it. Um, it's cheap, it's abundant, there's a lot of um, ESP32s out in the market, and it's ready to go. You just connect it with a USB and you're ready. All right, uh, a little bit about IoT itself, the Internet of Things. Uh, let's just watch a little bit of video, and I'll talk over the video just explaining it. Um, honestly, if you watch the video eight times, you get a lot more out of it, but since we don't have time for that, uh, I'll just give you the, the details as they come along. There's a lot of stuff here. This is a, you know what a smart home or a smart life could look like with the Internet of Things. Yeah, the, um, the uh, video starts with mom and dad writing home. Uh, this doesn't look like a Singapore home necessarily, but um, you know, it's, it, let's just assume you have a house or up an apartment. Uh, as you come in, you know, the IoT system knows to turn things on, um, that, that you're home, so it, it knows that you're home. Um, okay, there's a notification about the oven, that it's preheating. Uh, you, the mother at this point is creating a new IoT device or registering a new IoT device, something about doors. We'll see what that's for in a bit. It's not obvious at this point. She puts it on top of the refrigerator. The bathroom. The bathroom notices that that is or that it's occupied. Uh, the father is saying something to us to us to us to a microphone. The shower starts. Uh, the bathroom knows that a girl is in there, so it turns on. As soon as she leaves, the lights turn off. The refrigerator has some information about what is the inventory. It notes it notes that uh, eggs are out, but it doesn't. It's pending a notification. Take that! Uh, that's nothing to do with the Internet of Things. Uh, the mother is controlling the stereo of the son's bedroom to wake him up. Okay, I'm up. I'm up. Magically, breakfast is on the table. The car knows that. It's about to be driven because of the time, some pattern, and it tells the father that, hey, you need to stop by a gas station, maybe you should leave early. Okay, just a car. 
Uh, there's a toxic fume thing. Uh, maybe it 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 noticed that the car started. There's fumes already starting to pile up, so it opened the garage door. Ah, now we see why the mother put that um, new new thing. She 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 knows that the son is having an issue with leaving the door open. Everything in this house is so smart, but the refrigerator, for some reason, the door gets stuck. I don't know why. Okay, uh, energy saving mode, everybody left, uh, dad is at work, so the work also opens shades and turns on lights and turns on the computer, and also notifies the participants that, oh, the boss is here, let's all meet at the conference room, and that the conference room has been moved. Okay, uh, right. Somehow the smart devices know that the kids are in the class. The mother is ordering some drinks from a restaurant. It's not clear why yet, but we'll see in a second. A service person is coming up to the house. Shows some QR code that the house knows is a specific thing. Uh, it knows that a Wi-Fi access will be needed so the father is uh, granting Wi-Fi access to this person some other things available in the house to make sure that you know it's always safe and there's no fires and there's no floods the refrigerator decided that uh, there's no rice I don't know who keeps rice in the refrigerator but okay and the mother uh, knows now that there's eggs and rice that she needs to get and she snoozes it for 30 minutes uh, the device tells the restaurant that the person who made that order earlier is here so they get their drinks right away how did she know what the other woman wanted who knows that's very presumptuous even the soccer goal or the football goal is smart and can record accuracies of shots on goal. The lawn is set to a timer but notices that there are people around so it delays itself from starting. These people are trusted so the door is unlocked for them automatically. and so forth. So we have a lot of interesting IoT devices in here. Um, the rest of it is just, you know, things winding down and turning off by themselves. So we can skip that part. This is what IoT is about. So, you know, you, you, you get the idea. Uh, now we're going to try to create some devices like these IoT devices that we've seen that can, you know, provide us information, make our lives easier, um, automate some physical item in our in our in our environment okay um let's talk about um esp32s uh not all esp32 development boards will look like this but this is a very common version of an esp32 board um we will you know provide you information on what you can buy this one is called wroom-32 but you know there's a lot of other um, node mcu and as well as other types of um iot uh, sorry esp32 boards that you can get on the market um there's a blue uh, led which tells you the mode um it's and there's a red power led which is kind of uh on when when the battery is connected uh or usb is connected um the blue mode can be used for uh for programming and that's the LED that we're going to be turning on and off. Uh, there are also uh, various ways to connect to the board. One simple way is to just connect serially. That means we plug uh, a USB device to the computer and a micro USB or mini USB to, uh, to, to the, the end of this uh, uh, of this uh, controller board and then uh, you're, you're connected serially and everything is done no, no need to do anything special it, the other ways are using Bluetooth so we can because we said ESP32s 
also have Bluetooth abilities. We already pre-designed them to uh, also be uh, connected via Bluetooth. And finally, there's an internet way of connecting to, to the device. We'll talk about that in a different session. It's a bit more involved. So first, let's uh, go to IOTY. You've all been provided with the link to IOTY. It's ia9i.sg slash IOTY or IOT. I'm going to uh, load up that a9i.sg slash IOTY, as I said. And that brings me to the editor. Um, A9i, as in internet, dot sg slash IOTY. That's how you get to this, the editor. Okay, from there you click on where it says disconnected and three dots, click on the three dots, click on connection mode, and set that to Bluetooth. Okay, we're gonna be using Bluetooth for starters. Make sure your controller, your, your microcontroller is connected to power. That means either through USB or you can use VIN and ground uh, using uh, the pins to connect it to some battery or uh, outside source. But the easiest way is with the USB uh, cables that we provided. Those USBs can be connected to your computers or they can be connected to any uh, USB um, power, power dongle. Okay. Um, when you uh, when once you do that and you click OK here uh, and it tries to connect via Bluetooth, then the Bluetooth um, pairing window will open up on your computer, and you'll select the correct IoT device. Your IoT device should be uh, numbered and labeled. Uh, so if you have uh, uh, if you don't know what your IoT device name is. Um, please let us know and we will help you, but otherwise it should be labeled on your device itself. If you don't see your device, then uh, also let us know and we, we will try to help. Once you're connected, you'll have this green light, you can start programming your device. So we're going to be using, again, uh, the, the block-based programming using Blockly interface and uh, we'll be looking at pins first. Pins are uh, the pins. The programming pins are um, allow us to read and write uh, input output into all these pins on the outer edges of your controller. So you have edges on both sides. There are pins on both sides. There are many pins. Some of them are digital only pins, meaning they they will either give you a zero or a one. They're binary. Other pins are uh, called analog pins. Those can give you a range of inputs uh, or uh, to read in or can be set to a range of output um, uh, outputs much higher than just uh, you know zero or one on or off uh, but rather like a, a full range some uh, up to like 32,000 different values we'll talk about how to use that at a different time but for today we're only going to be blinking an LED on off so we'll be using digital writes Okay, we're not reading anything. Reading is for sensors. We're only writing pins to, you know, cr do something, create something physical, to, uh, make something physical happen. Either a light to turn on in this case, or you could think of, you know, in, in the future, a fan to turn on, uh, some other kind of motor to turn on or off, um, uh, uh, a sound to play, etc. Those are uh, outputs or writes. So uh, as you can see under the pins menu, we have a bunch of things where you can set the pin to a particular uh, type, uh, an input or an output. You can uh, read from a pin. That's again for sensors. We don't need to do that today or a button. First, we're going to be using uh, the digital write pin uh, block. That one block will allow us to write to pin number two, let's say, which is D2 here. Now, nothing is connected to pin two externally, but internally, this pin connects to the blue LED mode light. So we'll be able to turn this blue LED mode light on or off just using um, this block and setting the value to either 0 or 1 here. Uh, some other things you can do. You can sleep for one second. Uh, you can ask for the time or you can exit your program. You can also add a comment. This is under the control uh, blocks. Also, we have logic blocks uh, for creating uh, conditional statements, if, else, then, um, for creating equalities and inequalities to test some logic, uh, as well as for Boolean operators like AND and OR and NOT. 
And finally, uh, we'll be able to use uh, loops, um, either repeat n times or a while loop, while forever or while um, a particular condition. You can add a new condition here instead of true. Uh, you can also do something like a for loop uh, where you keep a, 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 an index. And if you have a list like an array, uh, you, can, you can also do things for each member of that array. And there's a breakout for the loop. Uh, we have some math. Uh, we'll get into that in a bit. And um, that's it. So right now you have a when started run immediately. You, that's your starting point to any program. If your program looks a bit different, if you already have a lot of stuff in your program other than just when started, you can go ahead and uh, click file and uh, you know create new uh, new block program. Again, if uh, if you have if you have anything here, you can just press file and new program. Okay, we start from scratch. Let me zoom in a bit so everyone can see clearly. Uh, we we want to first test just turning on the LED, so we can we can just do that. And we set it to one, which means turn on. The built-in LED, although it's pre-selected for you, there are other pins on the ESP32, and we can select any of those. Uh, usually, if there's something like boot button or other ones, uh, I would recommend not using them unless you know exactly what you're doing. In this case, we're telling you to use the built-in LED pin, so you might as well go ahead and use it. Zero will mean that the light will be off. One will mean that the light will be on. So the state of this pin both controls the output that you can externally tie to this using uh, you know that that physical pin and tying it to with a wire to something to some device like a, a, another LED or um, or a motor or anything else uh, and it's also tied to internally to this blue LED mode light so now we can uh, use that block as well as uh, combine it with some loop and, and some sleeps a control block to create uh, an LED to blink ten times, ten times uh, when when you when you restart your 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 controller, I can now uh, go through connecting to the internet. Uh, sorry, connect connecting to Bluetooth. Click OK. Find my device. Okay. Uh, don't worry about my machine right now. Find my device after connecting. And after you do that again, you still have to recycle the power by clicking the reset or boot uh, a button and then while it's t recycling while you see the light blinking three times press the enable button or the mode button here and uh, you'll see the light turn uh, solid once it does that then you can go back to your uh, your screen and press download to device and it will start the download process if you can't get that to work please call us if you did get that to work and you're seeing some uh, unexpected uh, behavior, you don't see the light turning on on your, on your device forever uh, when you reset it, then let us know as well. Before you download, you must restart your device and set it to a download mode. The way you do that is by to restart the device, click on the boot button to reset, and as soon as you see this uh, blue light start blinking, press the EN mode and hold it until the blue light uh, becomes solid and stays on for, uh, then you can t take your hand your fingers off of the enable button and once you do that um, you can click download to device until then the device is not ready to be in uh, download mode so you must do that first okay click the enable button while the uh, while you're booting while you're resetting the boot button will just restart basically shut the power off uh, while you're holding it and when you let go of the boot button the power restores and you can also do the same thing by unplugging it and plugging it. Um, and once you have the power off, um, uh, and, and once the, the power is recycled and the device is restarting, you'll see the blue light um, turn on and off, uh, start blinking. You will press the enable button at that point. You'll get a solid blue and then you can download to the device. Once you're done download to the device and you want to test, you can press the boot button again and that will just uh, reset the recycle the power again the blue mode led will still blink three times because that's just um, part of the power recycling led process but once it's done with that it will start running your program and if your program was 
you know, set the light on forever, you will see the light set on forever. If your program was blink the light 10 times, then you will see the light turning 10 times. Okay, uh, let me show you what uh, blinking 10 times looks like, just so that um, we're all clear on that. So programming uh, a blink. Okay, so let's see uh, how we can put these things together. So I want to show you how to uh, integrate a few things like loops in there and make your uh, device blink the blue light 10 times. Okay, what we have here is a repeat block from the loops. Okay, we'll, um, we'll, and we'll uh, use the digital write pin to turn things on. We also need to turn things off in order to blink, right? We can't just turn it on. If we turn it on and then on and then on and then on, it stays on forever, one solid long uh, blue LED on. Uh, so in order to blink, you actually have to turn it on and then turn it off and then turn it on again and then turn it off again. Now, uh, these digital writes, they happen in uh, you know, micro or nanoseconds. So it happens too quick for you to notice. If you download this program, you'll see the light either looks like it's always on or it looks like it's always off. It doesn't really look like blinking at all. Um, so what we want to do, uh, we want to like create some uh, time lapse in between. Now, what happens if I just do this? Let's see, it'll turn the light on. It'll sleep for one second, light on, 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 one second, done. Then it'll turn the light off. And again, I told you that these blocks take nanoseconds. The next step will be a nanosecond later, it will turn the block on again. So in this case, if you just download this, if you if you tried this and it didn't work, it's because you know your, your light is staying on for a second, off for a nanosecond, on again for a second. So that, to our naked eye, that will look like on forever, okay? So we also have to add another sleep in order to uh, make the the off state also uh, you know have a time lapse. So in this in this case your blink will take each blink will take two seconds, one second in the state of off and one second in the state of on. If you want it to be of just one second for the cycle, then we can have it be 500 milliseconds or half a second on, half a second off. Okay, that will that will mean each blink is one second, and you you don't have to use the same amounts of time. You can uh, you can you you know you can you can uh, be off for only a quarter of a second and on for half a second, or if you wanted to take a second. So this will look like on off on off on off on right, uh, and if you change it. the opposite. Uh, now we have a very short on and very long off cycle. So it'll be off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on. Okay, so you can, you know, whatever light effect you're trying to achieve, you can use these, uh, you know, the, the sleep to uh, to create that, that light effect. The, you can use different um, values in, in either one of these sleeps. Right, so this is how you do it. If you want to blink more times, you can change that. If you want to blink until somebody does something, you can add a while with a condition. We don't have any sensors yet or buttons, so we're not going to do that. Okay, I think that's enough for one lesson. We've learned uh, now how to, um, we've learned how to do all the different um, basic things, how to program the device how to uh, reset the device, and how to use a few basic blocks to create a blink. As a challenge for you to do uh, until the next time we meet, you can um, create code that, uh, that blinks uh, something like Morse code. So, you know, if you want to blink SOS, you can do uh, three short on, off, on, off, on, off. Uh, each unit of time is uh, 165 milliseconds, you can figure that out. Um, the space between parts of the letter, uh, sorry, the length of a dot is one unit, so the time that this is on should be 165 seconds. Uh, a dash is three units, so whatever three times 165 milliseconds, that's for a dash. The space between parts of the same letter is one unit. 
So if you have dash, 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 that means 165 milliseconds on, 165 milliseconds off, right? That's the space between these two dots. Then 165 milliseconds on, 165 milliseconds off, 165 milliseconds on. That's just to create the S. And then the space between letters, so between S and O, that's three units. So three times 165 milliseconds between this and starting the O. The O will have three dashes. So again, a dash is three units, so it's on for 300, uh, three times 165. And then the space between the two dashes is back to just one unit. So this space is still 165 milliseconds. The dash is long. It's three times 165. So given all of that, uh, all of these criteria, uh, you can figure out how to blink SOS with your tiny blue light. Um, you can blink your name and um, as, as an added bonus. And finally, if you want to really go for an advanced thing, you can create a function uh, library, a library of functions that supports all characters. And I will show you how to do that in the next lesson where I show you a little bit more advanced programming concepts like functions. But for those of you who want to uh, explore a little bit, you can uh, skip ahead to the next uh, lesson and see how that's done, uh, the solutions are provided in there. All right. Um, unfortunately, I can't take questions in this format, but uh, I would, you know, you could always leave comments and let us know what you think about this program. And uh, yeah, let us know if we can uh, support you in any other way. This has been a posteriori, and we just introduce you to our new electronics and IoT platforms called IoT or IoTY. Lovely. See you again next time.